If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be my September book haul video. I've accumulated enough books in the last two months to uh, share with you. There's a mix of actually brand new ones, which I don't buy a ton of books. I feel like I think this is my biggest haul of the year so far. And uh, as always, a mix of used books that I've been finding when I'm thrifting. And I'm going to go through all of them. Let me know in the comment section uh, which ones I should try to prioritize. There's a few that are actually perfect for like the Falls of Mystery Thriller Horror. A few that are continuing uh, series, which I've been attempting to do. <laughs> I'm doing not too bad now. After August, I've been reading quite a few, so let's get through them. The first book is Babel, which was one of my most anticipated read of the year. Special thank you for uh, Catelyn for getting it to me from my Amazon wish list. Super thankful. I was expecting to give this five stars. I'm not done with it as I'm filming it. It will probably be done whenever this video goes up. I don't know when it's going up, but I will be done with it. For sure, uh, I know that it's Dark Academia. Uh, it's about languages and it's the same author as the Popular, so I knew she was going to be rootless and probably break my heart. So I'm waiting for that to happen, but so far I'm really enjoying it. So looking forward to hearing everyone's thoughts on it, but so far I'm loving it. Last month, Chapters Indigo was having a sell and I decided to pick up a couple books that were the second book in a series because I, like I mentioned, I'm trying to keep up with series a little bit better. And I decided to grab two. The first one being uh, The Fires of Vengeance, which I really, really love the first book, The Rage of Dragons, which uh, we read the, with the book club actually on Patreon. And not everyone loved it, but I personally really did. I really enjoyed, um, it was like reluctant main character, um, revenge story. I enjoyed the magic system quite a bit, but we didn't get a lot of it in the first book, so I'm hoping that we're going to get more, more answers in book two. The only thing I wasn't sold on was the romance, which is usually the case for me, so no big deal, uh, but this is the second book. I'm really, really excited to see where things go, and I feel like it's going to decide if it's a favorite series for me or not, but I have a, I have a good feeling. I think this is going to be great adult fantasy. Didn't mention it, but I feel like kind of can guess that with the cover, and it has dragons, so we'll be reading that hopefully one day. <laughs> and the second series I wanted to give a second shot to try to continue is this one, uh, The Hunger of the Gods, which uh, the first book was The Shadow of the Gods, which Vikings, um, old gods, giant gods, and actually you can still see, it's still the same. You can see the size of that god compared to people. I don't understand how people survive in that world. Once again, it's an adult fantasy and I don't understand. I feel like I would have died <laughs> instantly. I would be the most boring main character. <laughs> ever in one of these books. Uh, but yes, the magic system once again seemed really, really interesting. I enjoyed the way book one ended, so I was curious enough to continue. So we'll be doing that. Once again, it's a pretty chunky one. Uh, it's like 600 pages. It's pretty floppy though. Whenever I can, I try to get the, the paperback ones because yes, they're cheaper. In Canada, books are super expensive for some reason. Um, but the floppy ones, so much better, so much better. Also, I've been trying to buy the books that I get either from my library or if I have an ebook copy of it uh, because I'm trying to get my bookshelves to represent my reading taste better. Uh, currently, <laughs> my books are all over the floor in my bedroom because I'm transforming what used to be my bedroom into a library. It's going well. Uh, I still have a good month, easy to uh, work on it. So we're going to stay in a chaotic mood, but most of you said that you enjoyed it because it's very like cozy. Like we're currently chilling in my bedroom on the floor. I feel like this is old school YouTube. I'm liking this. So uh, the book that I decided to get this month that I gave five stars to, but I didn't own a physical copy of is this one. This is the book of the unnamed midwife, which I've mentioned quite a few times already because this is the first, I think, post-apocalyptic book I've given five stars to. I think so. I feel like I loved the genre whenever I started watching booktube and doing booktube videos and I just realized that none of them were really exactly what I wanted and this is this is really unique different I really really enjoy it I feel like it's not very uh gratuitous, gratuitous? <laughs> with uh the sexual violence towards the female characters like it's obviously ever present but like there's no like 10 page detailed essay scene you know um but yes I really really enjoyed this wanted to own a copy and now I do so yay I try during the fall to get a few mystery thriller horror books that are either new or really popular to give them a shot to mix and match with whatever I already have. And one that I have seen going around, I couldn't resist, is Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which is part of the Reese Witherspoon book club, which it's been hit and miss for me uh, so far, her picks. However, this one, the premise sounded so appealing that I needed to give it a shot. Uh, you basically following a woman, uh, she sees her son basically kill a man and uh, whenever she falls asleep, she wakes up and it's like the same day over and over again, which I love that trope. I love that trope. So can you stop a murder? Kind of like mystery thriller. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm really, really hopeful. And 
yeah, hopefully it works for me. <laughs> Cross all of your fingers, but I have a good feeling. I have a good feeling. I think I'm actually gonna give this a shot uh, this month. So before the end of the month, I will have read this. I'll let you know if it's worth the hype or not, but it's brand new. So I wanted to test it. And I had to buy it because the waiting list in my library is like six plus months. So the premise sounded too appealing. I needed to read it ASAP. Uh, the next one is one that a few of you actually recommended to me. I did a video recently about short books. If you're interested, I'll link that down below. I have like three videos so far about short books. And every time I post one, I get a bunch of recommendations. Obviously I have to get a few and then it will probably be part of the content in a future book recommendation for short books. Um, Sour Candy. Okay, this one is a horror book, which I have mentioned that I love the idea of horror, but I feel like half the time they have open endings, which I don't like them. I feel like I don't care what the ending is. I just want the author to make a choice. Is it, I don't know, vampires? Is it magic? Is it uh, aliens? Is it disease? I don't care if it's ghost. Just tell me what the answer is. And this one apparently doesn't have an open ending. It's really short. It's like 75 pages. And I read the back, which I'm scared is a spoiler. I'm hoping it's not. I hate whenever they do that. Like whenever the back has a spoiler. So hopefully it's not. But um, you're following a man who seems to have like a very normal relationship. He has a son, you know, they, they seem to be close, whatever. And turns out that the man has kidnapped the guy, the, the, the kid just a couple weeks ago. That's why I'm saying like, it better not be the spoiler. Um, but I'll let you know. Uh, again, I'll try to maybe sneaking, sneak it in. Uh, somewhere this month or next month because that sounds cool. I like the cover. I don't have a lot of horror books, so I'm adding that to my shelf eventually. <laughs> Another short book that I wanted to pick was this one. It is absolutely tiny. Once again, it's about 50 pages. Yeah, I've been wanting to read some Audrey Lord. Uh, this one is The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House. In, uh, it's a collection of essays in the back. It just says, uh, from the self-described black lesbian mother, Warrior poet, these soaring urgent essays on the power of women, poetry and anger are filled with darkness and light. So it should be a pretty quick read, but I've been wanting to read books by her. So now I own this. The only thing is that it's really cute, but like, where do I put this on my shelf? It's gonna be like so tiny next to like even short books, but we'll find a spot, we'll find a spot. Okay, the rest are all uh, found at the thrift store. So the first one, I've been really, really wanting to read something by Jace Baldwin. And um, specifically this one, actually, Giovanni's Room, I've heard really, really amazing things, uh, but I was going to pick whatever I could find by him because I keep seeing quotes by him and every time I'm really interested and really impressed. So I wanted to read anything by him. I uh, believe this one, I tried to not know too much, but I believe this one was published in the 50s and you're following a man who is kind of hesitating between the love of a woman and a man. So obviously in the 50s, that was pretty controversial, especially by a black author. So. Uh, we'll let you know, but I have a good feeling. I might include this. I was thinking about doing a video about um, books that I don't know anything about, but I think I'm gonna give five stars to. I think that could be fun. It might be a complete flop, but I feel like I'm gonna give this five stars. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, the next one, I was with a friend actually, Trifting, and she told me that she loves this book. So I obviously picked it up, wanted to try it. We don't have the same taste like at all, but hey, uh, their eyes were watching God, which again, not a too big of a book, actually, I'm realizing. Uh, this one is like 200 pages, okay. You're following a, a black woman in the 30s, I believe, and she's trying to figure out who she is in life and you're following her story through like three marriages. So it's about her, her trying to, again, find who she is and like her independence, which in the 30s, Sounded interesting, so we'll get I'll give that we'll give that a shot. Even though I'm not super big on historical fiction, um, ooh, okay. I mentioned how I'm trying to buy books that I've already read but don't own and I loved. So of course, uh, when I saw A Thousand Splendid Sons, you will find his books literally everywhere. I feel like everyone has read them, like even people that don't read a lot, and they're really great. They're very impactful. They will make you cry or just break your heart at least. And this one is no different. And I really, really enjoy his work. He's very quotable. Uh, this one, there's a few very popular quotes uh, that I enjoyed, but yes, about women, uh, domestic violence, mainly in Afghanistan. So would recommend if you haven't read it, but I feel like everyone has at this point. So <laughs> I was just a little late. Uh, I was really excited whenever I saw this book. I didn't know it was a book. Uh, that Poet Society, which I want to rewatch a movie. So I'll probably read the book, watch a movie, so see how it goes. But I'm hopeful that I will love this. Um, the movie broke my heart when I was a kid. So 
it's been years though, so I don't remember much except the ending. So yes, hopeful. Uh, kind of works, Dark Academia for the fall, right? So we'll read that very soon. Um, then, okay, one more that I have already read. The rest of that I haven't. Um, ooh, this is a library copy, so it's very shiny. I need to try to remove the top. Uh, this is Furiously Happy, which I have read, or I should say listened to all the audiobooks of this author, Jenny Lawson. She narrates all the audiobooks, obviously it makes them even better. She talks about her life, uh, her mental and physical illnesses, and she's just hilarious. Like this is the first one I actually listened to as an audiobook and fell in love with her. I was, lit lit I was literally laughing out loud while listening to it. So always a good sign. Um, this cover also makes me laugh because this is a, uh, how do you call that in English? Like it's dead and they filled it up. This is not the right way of describing it, but anyway, um, obviously very much uh, the perfect image of Furious Lamp. <laughs> but yes, uh, if you haven't read anything by her, would recommend it, but that's once again an attempt to make my bookshelves look more like my taste. So I have now that. I also mentioned that I was trying to read translations because Mystery Thriller, I'm trying to like I'm trying things because a lot of popular ones don't tend to work for me. A lot of them, like I mentioned, are like domestic thrillers and I don't really care if your husband is cheating on you and like the other woman. So one that was recommended in general was this author, but I found this one as a thrift source. I picked it up. Uh, this is The Devotion of Suspect X, which I believe is the first book in like a crime series. And uh, this one starts with, I think it's like a her hex... This woman, her ex-husband shows up one day and something happens. They have a daughter. I don't know exactly what happens, but crime. So I'm assuming someone dies. Um, <laughs> but we'll see if that one uh, works for me. It has really, really great readings. And like I said, I've heard great things about the author in general. So I will be uh, trying at least this one, maybe something else by them. Uh, two authors that I've been meaning to try. Um, the first one, I... I think is the first book in a series also. This is Otherland by Ted Williams. I've heard great things about the author in general. I think he writes fantasy sci-fi and I think this is like I said the first book in an adult sci-fi series. It is chunky. This feels like very much like old school giant sci-fi book and there's actually a huge awkward picture of the author. I always think it's awkward when they have like a big face in the back. I have one of like, I think it's Stephen King. It's like the whole book. It's his face from close. It's too much. Um, but <laughs> I feel like in order to be able to review books, I have to pretend authors don't exist. So it's that's why I'm saying it's awkward. Um, but yes, let me know if it's the best way to start with him because I have no idea, but I saw it. I saw it was the first book. So I was like, I mean, I have to, I have to. So I did. And then uh, I have Crypto, Crypto, Cryptonomicon by uh, Neil Stevenson, which I've been meaning to read something by him. I have Seven Eves, which I was supposed to read whenever I was doing my like big book challenge, like three, four years ago. And I choked and didn't read it. So, but that one starts with the moon exploding. So like, it sounds like I should read this, uh, but I saw this one and I thought it would be a good reminder that I suck and I need to actually read the books that I own. So, <laughs> oh, before I forgot, I got one uh, ebook, which I always forget to mention these in my videos. So good thing I just thought about it. Um, I mentioned that I've been trying to read more wholesome books and I'm, I don't know if I'm picky, I'm difficult, I don't know, but I feel like often they either... I'm either not emotionally invested enough, so I don't really feel much whenever I'm reading them, or uh, I feel like emotionally manipulated, which sounds bad. But I recently read um, Legends and Lattes, which as soon as a physical copy is possible for me to order, I think it's coming out in November in Canada, I will be getting one because I need to own that book. It was so cute. Uh, but yes, that one, that's the one that made me ask, do you have any recommendation? And someone mentioned, uh, the Cybernetic Tea Shop, which that sounds really similar according to the title. And I think this one is why, but I wanted to give it a shot. So I did get the ebook. We'll be reading it. We'll let you know uh, how we feel about it. But oh, I'm so glad I thought about including it. So I have it now. And then uh, we have another book from the Reese Witherspoon Book Club. Will I learn my lesson one day? Maybe. Uh, but hopefully I like this one. I've seen this cover everywhere and I usually don't like people on my cover but for some reason this one works. Uh, this is Seven Days in June which it's a romance. Again not usually my thing but I really enjoyed Emily Henry's books so I've been wanting to try to figure out like I, I know now basically that I don't hate all romance which I never really thought that 
but I'm just very like, it's a question of finding exactly what works for you. And in this case, you're following uh, these two people who had a relationship like 20 years ago. They kind of reconnect for seven days in New York, which I, I do like that setting New York. So I'll give it a shot. The reviews are really, really positive. It might work for me. It's worth a shot. So I got it. So these are all the books that I have gotten the last couple of weeks. I'm actually really excited by some of them. Um, like I said, a few of them I'm hoping to read within the next month or two. Uh, let me know if you have any that you think I should prioritize, which one do you think I would love? I would love to hear that. Let me know in the comment section which books you have bought recently, anything specific that you're looking forward to reading for the fall. I will be putting on the screen more videos that I recommend you check out, including I did one recently where I asked you which tropes didn't work for you, and I gave you some exceptions, which is kind of what I've been doing, I feel like, with romance lately, trying to find exceptions, and sometimes, sometimes they work. I will see you in my next video. Thumbs up, subscribe. Bye.